Now to our first story. Now, former Imo State Chief Executive and serving Senator Anayo Richards Okorocha has had a case brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, at an FCT court that's in Abuja, quashed. The presiding judge, Yusuf Aliru, premised his judgment on the fact that the EFCC had filed a similar matter before a federal high court in 2022, which decision was in favor of the former governor. Sometimes you wonder if these cases are designed to go this way. But let's hear from the former governor, first of all. We don't have a, we expect to bring uh, the bit about the former governor to you in the course of the chat. Uh, so um, the EFCC should have seen this coming. Yes, so I, the rate at which politically exposed persons um, defeat the EFCC in court is alarming. They have a very good record with um, um, advanced fee fraudsters, <laughs> Yahoo boys, and, mm. and the like. But with politically exposed persons, who can hire the best lawyers because they've got the resources, who, lawyers who can exploit loopholes and all that. The EFCC always struggles. The FCC always struggles. Uh, we've seen judges even beyond even dismissing cases brought before them by the EFCC, from lashing them, mm. accusing them of not doing due diligence, of not prosecuting um, uh, such matters diligently. Because they say, as you lay your bed, so you, you lie on it. If you prosecute a case badly, you lose badly. You lose badly. Mm -hmm. And um, the person that you wanted to put uh, in the slammer for so long will walk, will walk away. So this, we see this again and again. And look at what um, the judge he has argued uh, that the, the charge was different. But uh, the court cited the Federal High Court uh, judgment delivered in February 2023, which dismissed a similar suit mm. filed by the EFCC. So EFCC has to do much better, honestly. Because we can't have a situation like we tried to have in the past, whereby the EFCC will take cases before judges that have some level of sympathy for it. They had that in the early days. But with um, the EFCC taking on far more cases than it used to take, you are not going to have a situation in which you'll be able to decide which judge will preside over your mind. There are so many cases, so the, those the disparate cases will simply be sent to different judges. And yeah. some of those judges will simply throw the law book at you. So this is what we are seeing. Once there is an opening, mm. expect the sun that those big politicians are capable of hiring. Expect that sun to exploit it. Yeah. These things happen. And if we want to defeat corruption, I think the EFCC has to do better in terms of yeah. executing this well because we need to be able to um, get them jailed to serve as a deterrent to others. But if we are unable to do that, then more and more people will also fancy their chances of getting away with Blue Mother. And if you ask me, defeats the idea of setting up the EFCC in the first place? Yes, I, I, except, of course, some people will argue that the goal cannot always be to send them to jail. EFCC has to come up with structures that even make it difficult for people to... To evade justice. To, yes, mm -hmm. in the first place, or to commit even corruption. All right. I prefer that mm. to simply rely on the courts yeah. to help yeah. us defeat corruption. It, it begs the question, as I said, if the EFCC... Uh, deliberately did things like this, you know. I mean, well, well but uh, Ibn Abba, before we get back to you, 
let's hear former governor Richard Okorocha in a reaction. I must do everything to protect this integrity. Mm. I, 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 I believe that um, uh, nothing should discourage police from doing their work. They should do their work. Um, they're doing quite well, but, uh, but they should try to make sure everything is within the ambit of the law. That's just what we're saying. But, um, I just thank God Almighty that finally, uh, uh, the third time actually, that same court is saying the same thing over and over and over again. So this is not about who is wrong, who has won or who has lost. It's about this nation. Uh, fighting against corruption is something that must be done. Now we must continue to do that. The court needs to do that. But let it be within the ambit of law. We, we may go there now. Mm. Uh, the EFCC was set up to try cases like this. And of course, here, prosecution is at fault. What, I mean, you see, there was something BK said, because I've been trying to, you know, look into it, and I'm, I was hoping that I'm not right, but I think you said something else to corroborate what <laughs> indirectly for me. Okay. And that is, I've been looking at the nexus between the failure of EFCC and the political power. Is it deliberate? Do they deliberately leave such lacuna mm. for the political powers, uh, lawyers to feed on or, or what? Because this is not the first time. In fact, it has become like their characteristics that they are, when it comes to political powers, they never ever, you know, see to the end of it and, and this, this people don't get prosecuted. Mm. And like, I think you or VK will say something about these boys, you know, because EFCC has this style of, you know, traumatizing whoever they are trading. I mean, they did it to um, uh, Rochas in his house in Abuja. I saw the video. Okay. They were when, there. When they, 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 they actually, the yes, and they, they actually came in through the ceiling. Mm. That was quite traumatic for probably, I mean, I mean, the children and some other younger people in the house. So they have to go back to the reason for setting up. When you are called an anti-graft agency, you are to put behind bars or at least give punishment to those who, who are deserving. Exactly. Yeah. So when we keep having stories like this, it becomes very discouraging. So when they come up with somebody else, if it's, if, if it's a political power, it's like, OK, we know where it's going to end. And it is not very, you know, not very I interesting anymore. I cannot forget that a particular former governor, Jide Remembers, uh, has the, the uh, what do you call it, the decision by a court judge, judge who said perpetually he should not be touched, mm. if you remember what I mean. Yes, uh, mm. from the south-south. Yeah. Mm. Not far from where I've been a vocal. <laughs> No, in this dispensation. No, I thought we agreed not to. <laughs> okay, did I say that? Okay, I withdraw it. Okay, talk to you.